Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 1st, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start today with a couple updates regarding the memcache de-denial of service attacks. First of all, on Tuesday, memcache de released a new version 1.5.6 and this version now disables UDP by default. So you have to specifically enable it. Secondly, Kevin sort of put together a little post uh, with some tips on how to secure memcache. It's actually by default reasonably secure in the that it does only listen on loopback. A reader also left a comment with a little bit of more questionable way to defend yourself against these denial of service attacks in that, well, uh, what's attacking you here are memcache servers that are likely listening for commands from anybody. And these commands can include the shutdown or flush all command, which will essentially stop the attack against you. Of course, doing so may have legal and ethical implications. And then sadly, we got an other and kind of odd certificate authority issue. Now, this case is about Trustico. Trustico is a reseller for DigiCert. And apparently at the beginning of February, Trustico did ask DigiCert to mass revoke certificates that were issued by Trustico. The problem here was that Trustico was a reseller and typically the owner of the certificate has to ask for the revocation, which is really the customer of Trustico in this case. So if you ordered a certificate certificate from Trustico, then you have to ask Trustico to revoke it. And Trustico should be able to revoke them on their own. But for whatever reason, they asked DigiCert to do it. DigiCert didn't really feel comfortable doing so without really Trustico being the actual owner of those certificates. So I guess DigiCert ignored them somewhat to kind of force DigiCert's hand. Trustico then emailed the private keys for these certificates to DigiCert, which meant at this point, these private keys were compromised. And now DigiCert per policy from the Certificate Authority Forum was required to revoke these certificates within 24 hours. So if you are a Trustico customer, as of tomorrow, your certificate will no longer be any good, assuming that all the certificate revocation mechanisms that this process relies on are actually working, which tends to be a little bit a stretch. We'll see how this works in this case. So about 24,000 certificates are affected by this. Not a huge number, but certainly could be a problem for these customers. But well, there's also some good news about browsers and that's that the use of Flash is coming to end pretty rapidly. Google Chrome is sort of tracking how often people actually use Flash. Turns out, in 2014, 80% of users used Flash at least once a day. This is now down to 8%. So, of course, Chrome has installed Flash by default. Chrome will continue to include Flash until December 2020, which is the end of support date from Adobe. However, starting mid next year, July 2019, Flash will not be enabled by default. Now, while I'm not sad to see Flash gone, there's another technology that's struggling that I think has some value, and that's a DNSSEC. Apparently, since mid-2016, DNSSEC has been somewhat on a decline. The main problem, and that's a little bit my experience, is registrars who make it quite difficult in some cases to enable a DNSSEC. Now, if it is supported, it can be that simple to enable. Uh, you just essentially turn it on and the registrar manages all the keys for you. But if you don't have that option, it can be quite difficult to actually get the registrar to cooperate. 
And AV Comparatives, an organization that's well known for well uh, comparing antivirus products, has uh, taken a closer look at the firmware of a number of popular TV brands. Well, uh, they looked for vulnerabilities, but I can actually say they did have to do a full, what I would call vulnerability scan or a penetration test. They really just uh, used the system, looked at the protocols being used, for example, for network remote control of the TV set, and it turns out it didn't have to look very far. A lot of the telemetry, for example, and the remote control commands were unencrypted. Also, firmware updates were unencrypted, not validated. Third-party apps were also downloaded without encryption, and the remote control commands did allow unauthenticated code execution. The vendor response was pretty sad in this case. Pretty much if you own a TV set, it will not be fixed. If you buy a new set in the future, some of these issues may be fi fixed, but uh, not all of them. In particular, it looks like the remote control arbitrary code execution will not be addressed. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.